well, so your standard. Okay, so the word standard. When I listen to you Here guys describe go. these situations, his standards to me are lacking in the situation where I don't care who offers you sex. Right. People, it's, it's a dime a dozen. People giving up sex like it's free government cheese. The word let was the word that my daughter talked about last time. We keep saying that she let him hit it. She let him do this, that, or the other. But why did he engage in the first place? If this person was substandard or this right. person was someone with a poor reputation, why would he let her? So that goes back to the poor standard. So why do the men have to... I would like to ask this question if there are any men in the audience who can help me with this. Why are there so... Why is there such a low amount of standard in men? Why are men not teaching other men to have standards? It's about getting the numbers, the, the belt notches, as many women as you can get. There's no standards being taught. And they're not teaching women to have standards. Because for me, if, if a man approaches me and he approaches me in a way that's inappropriate, I'm going to let him know this is not the way you do it. Now, right. you can't talk to me, but the next person you talk to, you should probably not say this. Men can do that as well because right. they have influence over these women. And, yeah. and you meet a woman, you'll sleep with her even though you think she's trash, and then talk about it to your boys, and then never call her again. Well, I think... Why I, not give her a lesson? A lot of women, you know, that I've talked to says, well, you know, there's a shortage of good men. I don't think there's a shortage of good men. I think there's a shortage of good women. You know, the problem is, is that a man, he's good. He's good at what he's doing. And you know what? We got to be good at what we do. If he has standards about the type of woman he's going to take home to meet his mama, because he's not going to just take any woman home to meet his mama. Right. So if you're not mama material, why are you allowing the, the precursor stuff? And that's the problem. Until you take me home to meet mama. Unless mama's ratchet, I don't know. I'm not talking about nobody's mama. There are ratchet mamas. But I think Ooh, that there are yes. plenty of good men and women. But I think the right. game has gotten everybody caught up. I think right. that the numbers are off. We outnumber the men. The desperation is up. The, the, tired, the tiredness is up. People are like, hey, I just want to be with somebody. I don't want to be by myself. Body. That's where the standards are dropping. Because these people that we're talking about are not all bad people. Right. The, the women who are being trashy, they're not necessarily bad people. And the men who accept it are not necessarily bad people. So and the, the standards are the problem. problem. The word is thirsty. That's and what that, the kids say. Thirsty. That's desperation. That's desperation. It's desperation. And you know, and there's some desperate men out be, there. Y'all got me scared to be thirsty for water. I don't even want to say anything. You just want to be quenched. I just want to quench. I'm parched. 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 I'm parched. parched. I'm parched. That's another word. I can't say thirsty. No, because, yeah, don't say that. Not a good word. <laughs> you will. You're dehydrated. <laughs> so, dehydrated. But I just think that there has to be some conversations before underwear go out the door because nobody's asking about being tested. Oh, you know, gosh. nobody's asking and about listen, when was your last not test. Not just asking. I need to see Demanding. Work, okay? No, I want to see them right now. I need to see we're not just yeah. yeah, we're not just talking. I can't even take right. your word about it anymore because they just, they have a new diseases every day. Stuff just falling off just at a snap of a finger. So, I'm so sorry. We need to talk. We need to have some discussions before there's some exchange of body fluids. And Absolutely. men too. Men should say, you know, it's a lot of things. My sister is a, a registered nurse. And it's a lot of things that she shows the younger teenagers in our family. She shows them the, the video that they show them at work. It is a lot of things that you can catch with a condom. Right. People don't know that. You can get the heebie jeebies <laughs> with the condom. <laughs> Lord have mercy. But Go they on. think because they got a raincoat on that no, no, everything no. is safe but, and, it's, and it's not. I got a question. Are we teaching our boys to value themselves? And you have a son, so you can kind of speak to that yes, as well. Yes, I am. These young men and grown men, unfortunately, are out here giving themselves away like there's right. no tomorrow. And they don't even care. Right. So are we teaching our boys to have any kind of value in themselves? Like, are you special? What you have means something. It's not just a piece of meat you can sling around. Yes. Because I anybody. Think, I think my son. Because they weigh in the sausage. To, yeah, I think my son is bound for the NFL. So it starts in the ninth grade right now. What I have tried to listen, input I, I in him. I don't care if he is bound for Walmart. You still have to have I a standard. Still, of life. if he was, if he was bound for college. I don't care. But what I keep telling him is that you know it's girls out here that is out to get you, and you may it it'll come in. I love you, Andre, and I'm I'm gonna be with you, Andre, and all of that stuff. This is your baby, Andre. This is your baby, Andre. But I done told him, no, no, no. I am your mama, 
and what's not gonna happen is that game is not gonna be ran on you. Cause I really you think you you look too young to be a grandma right about now. And, I, I'm, and I'm not saying, gonna be that grandma. Not. And I told both of my children, I'm okay. not that type okay. of grandma okay. like your you grandma. See how she, you see how I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't. Shamika's children, please. You gonna please. raise your own children? You gonna go to the army? Do whatever you have to do to take care of your children and be a man. What I'm not gonna do? I'm not gonna do that grandma stuff. I'm not gonna do that. So once we get past this, the panties too soon, and say you did have some standards and you met somebody nice and y'all start dating, then the next step is what? How do you know that you're dating that person? And how do they know they're dating you? Are we just assume. Oh, that's good. That we got to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got. We got. We got to use, our, gotta use our words. words. <laughs> and because you know, it's so funny because when we go, okay, we're in a relationship. Man. So I have a question. Did he say right. you were right. in a relationship? Right. Oh, we talk every day. It doesn't mean I'm you're in a women. relationship. I've women who have literally picked up and moved yeah. from one location to another because they thought they were in a relationship. It wasn't discussed. But because we were together, yeah, paid tragic. his job, transferred tragic. him, and we've been in a relationship. So I just, I took my son out of school and we relocated to move. But wait a minute, what, what conversation did you have with the man that indicated that it was a good idea to snatch your babies out of school and pack your bags? Well, we have been together for a year. I don't care if you've been together for 10 years. You have to use your words. words. You can't go by just an understanding. <laughs> well, you got to tell me, honey, we are in a relationship. Because that sounds like exclusivity. Right. You right. understand what I'm saying? And so and until you say that, then who's we're... Being, and who's being exclusive if we haven't said that? <laughs> right. Who's... Right. Who... And that's a good point. <laughs> well, so I, it happens know, to men, too, though. I know a man who yeah. moved here from another state with a woman. And to me, when he told the story, it sounded to me like she just wanted out of her state. She came with him, and within three she months... relocation. She was with somebody else living in their house with them. Wow. And took his well, stuff. She needed a mover. She needed a She needed a vacuum cleaner. She couldn't find. I, you know, I don't know. The new dude think, didn't have one. I think. Oh. I really honestly <laughs> think. You know, even if you, you know, just the lessons that I've learned lately, honey. Even if you use your words, you just never damn know. You no, don't you know. Have to try. You have you to do try. have to try. I agree with that, but you just really never know. You can think that you're on a path to going this way and going this way, and then boom, everything is changed. I, I, I don't even know. I'm just confused. I don't know, but there are a lot of different um, types of counseling you can do. There are a lot of churches who have ministries that talk to singles, and they um, try to help them at least come up with the how, how to, to go. Cause there is no guaranteed way to do it right or guaranteed way to do it and have it last or lead to marriage. But if you at least go into it, that even the yoke terms, real, if we at least go in on the same page, if we at least know that we've discussed that our desires are the same, that our goals are the same for the relationship, then I think, I think that the chances are better. Mm. Well, I I, know. you know, I, I think there's a lot of conversations that have to be had. We just don't want to have those hard conversations. Yeah. And the conversations have to be about sex and it has to be about, uh, I'm not saying, I'm not saying I'm ask you how many sexual parts. I'm not, ta well, maybe you need to, but you need to be talking about testing. You need to be talking about where are we in this relationship. You got to be honest. And then when they say later on, well, I didn't know we was on the same page and somebody was telling some lies. Right. And then when you call him a liar, now you... You're good. That, that's a correct definition. But I think that there has to be some conversations. We are making too many assumptions that men and women about a lot of things that's going on. And so when things don't work out and they don't happen, you're saying, well, John said this and Mike said that. Well, he didn't say anything. You made an assumption because well, he winked at you. Well, that's or he said, oh, first. baby, you know it's that's good. No. That's the situation. That's the situation. When, you, when you're desperate, when you're desperate, when you're desperate you will go around a whole bunch of corners and avoid a whole lot of details just so you can feel like you have something. People do it every day. But it's not so much that the men are lying to the women. I'm seeing that the women are not being as truthful we lie to men. ourselves. We yes. are lying to ourselves, plain and simple. Yes, just because you cute, just because you got on the right pair of shoes and you go meet this guy, that does not make you his wife or his woman just because he takes you home. So stop well, listen, lying to yourself. We, we have to go to a break. But when we come back, we should hear from our we audience. Should hear from our we got to hear from our audience. We have a, they, we have a pretty like diverse. They, know they may know something they on this one. They might be able to help us. When we, <laughs> when we come back, we will hear from our audience and we're talking about dating and relationships. We'll be right back.
Well, we are back. We are still here at the Daiquiri Shop in Carrollton, Texas. Woo! All of our friends, families, and watchers came out to help us. And so, I think, can we go with the first question on the table, which was, I was asking about standards. Why men don't seem to have the kind of standards that they should have in relationships. Why they're allowing any kind of woman in their bed. Why they're allowing any kind of woman in their space. Right. So, we have an audience member. Who is going to help us out with this? My name is Bill. Um, there are men that have standards. It all boils down to everyone wants to talk about soulmate. I don't believe in a such thing as a soulmate. I believe in what's called a trinity mate. What happens when, when you are looking for someone, you need to look for someone that in three areas, spiritual, physical, and mental. <clears throat> Too many times people are getting caught up on, oh man, this sister, she fine. But you know what, you got to find out where's her head at. So to go back to what you were saying about men not having standards, we are out here, we do have standards. Now there are some of us that are not going to step to every female we see because I want to find out, me myself, I want to find out where your head is, where your heart is. Because you know what, looks, you know what, they're going to fade. You know, but... I want to find out where's her heart, where's her head. Because I tell you what, you can have a gorgeous woman, but she can be a backstab. Right. So Same thing with a man. Let me ask you this. In your opinion as a man, do you believe, because we're not talking about women, we have our opinion about women, but right. do you believe as a man that men are living in substandard normality every day? And they're passing it through. Because I thought we believe that there are some out there, but do you think that is, we're not teaching it? Or Yes, I'm going to ask that question, and I do believe that a lot of men are living substandard because they're they're going after the uh, let's be honest, you know, they're going after the cookie. They're not they're not thinking with this head; they're thinking with the small head. See, because I know of there are men in my life that are my mentors, older men that have been married 30, 40 years to the same woman. And these are, these are the men that I look up to like, okay, how did you do it with the same woman? I say, well, you know what? You got to commit to stay. Because love, you know what? Love is not a light switch that you turn on and off. You know, it's a commitment. So a lot of times, yes, to answer your question, a lot of us as men, we have failed. We are looking at the short term instead of the long term of being with someone for the long term. So... They're looking for the immediate yeah, right. satisfaction and gratification. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It's we're living in a. I like what you just said because I call it the microwave age. Everybody wants instant gratification, but people that have been married happily married 30, 40 years, it wasn't instant. Mm -hmm. It was hard. It was pain. It was whatever. My mom and dad. They've been. I'm 48 years old. They've been married for 50 years. They they still argue and fight, but they stayed together. But we can't, we can't stay together two minutes. We can't get together. We right. can't get together. If they had an argument, they didn't have a war. Right. A lot of people think that every argument is a war. Right. And that this is the end all of end all. It's a civil, it's a civil war. Somebody's yeah. got to die, mm -hmm. which means there's a cutting off of. Right. And so there's, you know, a lot of us are not taught because a lot of us were not brought up in two-parent homes mm -hmm. or homes where there was a mom, a male and a female in the relationship. Right. And, and, the and, and that definitely affects the standards. We have another, we have another uh, audience member that would like to chime in. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm Tony, Anthony, either one. Okay. Uh, so, you know, just speaking on this whole thing about uh, men not having standards, 
I think men do have standards, but I also believe in you teach people how to treat you. So if a man is approaching a woman or whatever who's already projecting that, you know, she's an easy target or whatever, or that she's not of his standard and everything, one of two things is going to happen. He's going to walk away from her or ignore her, or he's going to just think about, you know, this might just be somebody I can just lay with or whatever. You know, men have a three-way thought process. We got when we want to date, when we want to marry, and when we just want to sleep with or whatever. And the, your, our perception is going to be based on what you project, you know. A lot of that is how you carry yourself. A lot of that is how you speak. A lot of it's going to be how you dress and everything. So it's not that we don't have standards and everything. It's what pool are we fishing from? Come on now. I like that. 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 I've seen it. It's not you as men. And Amber Rose disagreed with Reverend when he said, I'm not saying that you can't dress sexy and be yourself, but you do project a certain amount of energy. One way or the other, whether it's negative, positive, whether it draws someone from physical or mental, that projection is everything. People still want to believe, well, I can do whatever I want to do. They just should respect me, period. Well, based on what? You got to give them something to respect. Okay, so he, he did say something, and I appreciate that. The woman you want to date, the woman you want to marry, and the woman you want to sleep with. That's Based amazing. Based on what she projects. That's, that's amazing, and that's true. However, I still question some men's morals and their ethics. Because if you meet a woman who you know is only good for you to sleep with, why not just move along sometimes? What, why is it the need to bag that? Why you gotta catch it? Why you gotta be the hunter and gather and gather it all? If you know for sure that is not what you want, why, why are you sleeping with her? And, and listen, men, because our men, emotions are attached to that. Men's job is to hunt and gather, but when you have standards, what you will hunt and gather should should matter. It's but true. then again, it, he already knows in his mind she was just a, a, a lay. She's a lay. But you you sweeten her up with a honey baby sweetie pie darling right. and then she's confused. Exactly. And, and so exactly. and right that and that's good because women are like, okay now because we have soul ties. Even though we are here like, oh, I'm just like a dude, I can hit it and go on. But most of us don't know how to do that. I don't think you learn that game until you get into your late forties and fifties. So these young girls is out there talking about, oh, I could just hit that. Go on, ride that right fast, and then I'm going to go home. You don't even know that game. So you shouldn't play with fire if you don't even know that it gets, that you can get burnt. So I'm so sorry for the young women that want to play that game because men have not mastered So, yes. I, you know, I, I'm and in real life, it. men can get caught up in it as well. Because sometimes, men can as because, well. I, because what I have learned is great sex can make you think you're in a relationship. Amen. <laughs> you, I'm in love. This is my boo. I'm going to say what you his name is Bay. <laughs> Can I get you a sandwich? Bay. Like some cheese, some cheese. Because that connection, it goes back to that connection. You are connecting, thinking that you're going to go in and come out and that's it. But somebody posted that on Facebook recently, the the transference of energy yeah. between two people having yeah. sex and how when you link up and connect with someone, you're connecting with them and all the energy before you that was there. Yeah. And that was scary thought. And not only that, it was also saying that their energy stays in stays your body, body right, for so seven long. years. Can you imagine some of this trash out here? And, and with me for seven years? Oh, I need Jesus. a DMC. That's why. Well, Listen. <laughs> but you know what? They, they uh, you know, I'm a Steve Harvey fan who talks about the 90 day rule. A lot of men think that that's a game. They think women are playing some kind of game. The, the purpose, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the 90 days. It can be however long it takes you as an individual couple. But the goal is to give people the, the chance to do what you said. Talk. Let's talk. Let's get to know each other. Let's talk about the things that matter. The, the morals, the how you feel about God. Do you have a relationship? Are you a spiritual person? at home, what do you think about going, what do you want to do in the next five years of your life? Do you want children? Because now I'm pregnant. Do you want children? Oh my God. Oh. Yeah, and I that conversation typically happens after you, I'm pregnant. So I want to hear kids. from a woman in the audience about that, the 90 day rule. We, we throwing that out there, now it's a big controversy. Men want to take 90 days before they pay for a date, before they take you out to eat. Like sex equals a steak dinner. Right. And like I, I didn't really pay for it, I earned yes. it. 
And, and men feel, they sexy feel sexy. like it's okay to compare the two. Right. And so, sex equals a statement. Sex equals a statement, yeah. 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 To, to some people. Two chicken wings. If you, you know you eat off this side of the menu, they expect to get this. It's a two-piece chicken dinner. They tried it. They tried it. And these men are justifying that. Well, then, I, then I'm not going to pay for a date. Well, you've already decided whether you're going to sleep with me, whether you want to wife me, whether you want to be my girlfriend. And so dinner doesn't have anything to do with any of those three categories. So the 90-day... The 90-day is the question I have for women. Do you stick by that? Or is there a set time? Or are you looking for something in particular? So I don't use their rules, so I can't comment on that. But I did want to comment on the exchange thing with the sex and the dates I had a guy he saw me at work and he was like let's go have lunch and I was like okay so we walked across the street um, and we sat down before I could even order my water he was like so what's your phone number and I said I don't want to give you my phone number because I don't know you and he was like well usually when a man takes a woman on a date <laughs> he's gonna want to be in contact and I said well I don't know what people usually do but if you wanted a business exchange, you should have said that because I didn't agree to anything but to eat. A lot of men do that all the time. And it's hard when we try to answer dating questions. Because everybody has different standards. Everybody's so different in what they're looking for. We call it a situationship. A situationship. Okay, when you think you in a relationship, but it's a situation. And then when something gets real, then you're confused. Because you're not together. Wow. wow. This is such a new word. You know, I'm, yes. I'm only, I'm only, I'm only, I'm only 19. I'm, these new words are coming. The situation shit. Yeah. I've never heard of situation shit. Well, hey, you got to get on it. From the ladies about the 90 day rule. I need to hear, ladies, what you think about that. Because I know this is one of the experiences I've had. You can't say celibate too early. <laughs> <laughs> Cause he gonna run yeah, right for us. Cause they automatically think Mother Teresa not gonna maybe hit it unless I marry her, and that's right. not what I'm saying. I'm saying this is not a casual situation. You're not just gonna come here and get hooked up like that, right? Just because you like what you see. So the 90 day rule to me, I think is great. I don't, you know, again the timing depends on each person, but I don't know. Let's hear from what it is. Well, I think the reason why they said the 90 day rule is because you have to be able to communicate with the person that you're with. You have to find out if you're on the same page because the ultimate goal is to be on the same page. And if we don't have a foundation with communication, how can we have anything else? Because intimacy is just an added on top of that. Because if you really think about it, sex doesn't start in the bedroom. It starts at the moment that you wake up in the morning. It starts with how are you doing, the phone calls that you get, and everything else. And we as women want that connection to know that, we are, that we're important to you. You know, if we're not important to you, then we really, then you know, we're There's gonna put the brakes on. Love making starts. But right. Sex starts with the. <coughs> uh, right. That's sex. So sex, sex started, you know, when they first peeped you out. Right. But love making starts before that. So exactly. I think you're getting the words confused. I'm and, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not an expert. But, but I'm just, you know. What you say? But kind of. But kind of. But sort, kind of, yeah. sort of. Yeah. Like something like that, almost kind of. But, but she said something that I think that many women would listen to and really hear and accept. If he is not calling you, right. if he's not checking on you, if he's not there where you need him to be, you're in a situation ship. That's right. not a relationship. He if, if he, he, he's showing up for some, on. yeah, oh yeah, what you have on, and then yeah, send me oh, a send picture. Me a picture. Yeah. I would, you know what, no, old no. folks, I'm sorry, I'm, now I'm on a rant. Uh -oh. Who, what person over 40 oh, is sending pictures of themselves to it. some random dude? This, everybody. Let me tell you something. If one more, hey, send me a picture of yourself. Why? Well, listen, Ooh, you God. saw me on Facebook. You stopped okay, my wait, wait, wait. I don't think I'm going to be good at dating. I, I, really, I don't think I'm going to be that. Defense, guys. The don't forget people. about the, the picture people. Don't forget about the catfish situation. People are sincerely and genuinely concerned that you are not who you say you are. However, here's my tip for today. Um, You can always Skype someone. I don't like, and I have had... Recently, two men just say, well, I don't want to communicate with you or deal with you because I don't know if this is really you and you don't want to send a picture and I think that I was told I was selfish and self-centered, wow. as petty, as childish. It oh, is you contradictory did you because tell them that you, you, did, you do have a speech about being selfish. You know oh, I do. I, I, okay. You know I did. That's okay. another show. Okay. But, but, but people have a huge problem with this. So I even have suggested to new men that I've met. I've met people on dating sites. I've met people that have been introduced to me through other people where we did not meet face to face. 
You can always ask someone, can you Skype me? And, and to me, here's what communicate. Use your words. I'm feeling uncomfortable about the fact that I've never seen you. I really want to, before we go any further, make sure that I'm dealing with the person that you say you are. So, so I'm not going to be good at this. Well, I, I like how you kind of segue the 40 and over, right? So I'm in okay, that crowd, which yeah. I love, right? Yes, me too. I am totally okay. loving my sexiness, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Woo -hoo. Woo. This is all of 55. Girl, you look good. Okay. I thought you were so, so again, you, you, we were both 39 And she made an announcement. We didn't really have to compliment her. She but it's okay. This. This. Yeah, this is me because I like okay. me first. Uh -huh. I like the inside, right? The outside is the bonus. Right. Good. But you got to like, you gotta like the inside. So we want to go back to what you said about the pictures. So interesting. Guys like to send pictures, right? And so I kind of feel sometimes like, are you like catfishing me? So this brother said, you know what? I'm going to send you a picture of me so it'll be on your phone so it'll pop up. I'm like, cool. So he sends his penis. Wow. Wow. See, see the age group doesn't It was matter. small. That means it's small. Oh. Wait, wait. It was so wait. It, it, was, was, it, was, it was small. It so was I small. said. It was small like that. It was small. So I said, okay. So number one, disrespectful. Yeah. As a woman, you did this to me. Right. I'm not your girl. Right. So I said, let my Twitter followers take a look at it. So I sent it out to all my, so again, fellas and girls, be very careful when you send them pictures, because I will tell you, there's a lot of pictures of people undercover going on out there, and it's the same kind of a thing. You send me something disrespectful, it's not my intellectual property. I own it. Right. I can do whatever I want to do. And that's exactly, I put it on the gay website with the phone numbers. Ooh. I put it out, you gave it to me, it belongs to me. And listen, right. I don't know if you guys know this, but I found out recently there is actually Wait, it's mine. a site it's mine. where you can go and I, guys are sending, like, say you're in a relationship and it doesn't work out, but you've sent your man all these sexy pics. Mm -hmm. I'm not with it, you know, I'm just not. But if you did, be aware that they actually have sites where they can anonymously post all right. of your pictures and put that out there and they were people and i saw that on steve harvey and these women were crushed because they were professional women they were in relationship situations that they thought were real right. relationships and right. when things went sour that's out but you said viral. right when they send it to you it's it my now, intellectual it's property now it's yours. Mine. it is your intellectual property right. you could do what you want to do with it so you know i'm gonna be honest with you my brother-in-law accidentally sent me a picture of himself i was so hot i, I pressed charges against him because at that time my daughter was little Uncle mm. Joey show up on the phone. It's Uncle Joey answer the phone, and now she's seeing your full frontal. No, so I filed a police report against him. You, it's something wrong with you sending your junk across data lines. So I had a exactly. yeah, I did press charge and we'll press charges that. against him. So again, him it's again. about making well, sure we keep our standards up. Don't let them down. Yeah. You should be beautiful, beautiful from the inside. The outside is the bonus, male and female, and we got to learn to respect ourselves more. So. Big up us over there. He sent you a picture of himself. So if you guys are going out on a date, you couldn't identify him in the room. So that means you had to go to every brother. Let Please me see your <laughs> Well, there is no date. First of all, let's 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 just cut to the chase. You send me a picture of your genitals and you're not my yes. man, yes. there is no date. No date. Because chances are you've sent that picture out to a whole lot of other women. Wait. And even men sometimes. Oh, well. Oh, I was trying not to go. Okay. Did she go there? Like she went there. She went there. Okay. Okay. We have another audience. Okay. We have, yeah, girl. You had to look, just do the mic loud. Uh huh. Bit. You got to, we got to put the mic, this is the whole tweet, tilt it down for you. Yeah. Yeah, it'll come down. I don't know how to work it. Just say something, child. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> it just right, it hit. It hit your heart. It hit. It, hit. it was a little love tap. About three minutes. We'll take one more. Okay, good. Um, mine is twofold. Uh, I'm old school, so I'm gonna start with the old school stuff first. So from the old school, men actually dated you. When they called you, it wasn't about the hookup. It was about, hey, I want to take you out and get to know you. So with that being said, I'm just now getting into the dating world over the last past eight years after my husband passed. So I'm learning this new school dating. Mm, yeah. When they call and they say, well, can we hook up? I ask, and this is going back to this young lady saying, um, yeah, I'll go out to lunch. I have to ask, when you say hook up, what does that mean? Because I'm from the old school and I don't know what that means. Does that mean we going out to lunch? Does that mean you want to come over for Netflix and chill? Or does that mean, you know, you want to come over for a booty call? I'm not sure. So with that being said, I think that women in turn ought to 
uh, validate what they're trying to get in, out of it as what well. What expectations and say, are. Yeah, no, what my expectations are. And they're and always the unspoken. When you call a woman and say, hey, let's get together, you need to announce your expectations. I'm exactly. interested in taking you out, or I'm wondering if I can come to your house and hang out with you, or I'm interested in a physical relationship where you sit on that. Right. It's as simple as using your words. And a lot of but women you know will answer that truthfully exactly. and upfront. Yeah. And it's a selfishness thing with guys. Unfortunately, once a guy has keyed in on um, a prospect for physical contact, they don't necessarily want to lose that opportunity. So the conversation is going to vary based on their desire. So they may say, even in that conversation, yeah, I'm open to dating, even in their mind, like, well, if dating means me hitting it for a couple of weeks, you just don't ever know what the translation, it could be loosely translated, but the communication is still but I key. think once they, like she said, once they get, once they start talking to you, they'll know that they're not gonna be able to hit it on the first, second date. It's not gonna happen that way. So men know, I mean, they're gonna try, that's what they're supposed to do, they're the hunters. They're supposed to try and go after the kill. However, they know who they, what what game they can capture and what game they can't. Mm, I like so, that. You, I like you that game. Game. You, what game yeah. they can capture? I, yeah, I, I said something. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah. Time, I like, you know, like you know something about how, 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 you know. Yeah, you know. Hey, I'm I'm over fifty. And I look good. You should have seen my pictures yes, last yes, night. Yes, I did. I did yeah. see your pictures last night. Okay, I'm sorry. Fabulous. I got off the course. Uh, listen, when we come back, we're going to talk about how do you introduce your new boo to your children. And when. And when do you do that? Because I'm not sure about introducing them right away like Steve Harvey said. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Ladies, join us for this year's Run Women's Conference, July 23rd, 2016 at 8 a.m. With our special guest, Sheila E. Yes, you heard us right, the Grammy Award winner, Sheila E. Looking to be empowered, motivated, and encouraged? Look no further. Join me along with thousands of women as we reset our goals and aim for higher heights in our business and within ourselves. That's the Run Women's Conference 2016. Want a little more glamour in your life? Join us July 23rd at 8 p.m. at Gillies for more Sheila E. with her live band. For more ticket information, log on to runconference.org or text the letters RWC to 313131. Get your tickets now. And we are back again here at the Nagara Shop. We're talking about dating still, and we have a really wonderful crowd with us. Someone said something really cool. Before we move on, we're going to take one last comment. Who said something about standards? Someone said something about standards. Yeah, here's, we somebody said something about, about, about the standards. standards. The standards in raising your son. Yeah. And so. Yes, I would like you to share. Because he was talking about um, when you're raising your son, what, what we're teaching him and everything, and he. he the question basically, was amazing. basically what I was asking is, if you look at your son, ask yourself this question. Are you raising the son, meaning eventually he will be a man that you wouldn't date yourself? Absolutely. Meaning, That's a wonderful question. and look at it like this right here. You raise your son with things a lot of times because your kids nowadays are being raised in single parent households. So the son get the PlayStation, he get the nice clothes, he get the computers. So he's being raised by things. Now that little girl, on the other hand, when she can walk, when she can talk, you take her to the nail shop with you, you take her to the mall with you. So she's getting the on-the-job training. And she's learning how to win in this world by the subliminal messages that are being sent to mom. So therefore, that's why there's a big difference, a big gap between being mature when it comes to the boy and when it comes to the girl, because mama has taken her out into the world because daddy is absent, and therefore, the things, she really thinks that this right here is what she's supposed to do, but in all actuality, what you're doing is you're cradling him, you're coddling him. So, just something to think about. Ask yourself the question, are you raising 
the son that you wouldn't date yourself. That's an excellent point. That's an excellent point. Now, we also had another gentleman, and I, before we move on, that, came, that was talking to me off the air that was talking about how, you know, um, dating, and you come talk to yourself about, you know, how people are dating these days. So, going back to dating today, you know, a lot of people, men and women, are playing games. Okay, let's be honest. Yeah. You know, and we have walls that have been constructed because yes, many men trying to get, you know, trying to get the goods. Maybe. Many women, you know, they just hey, my wall is built up. Trying whatever. They let you be okay. I'm right. Sorry. So let's say <laughs> a real man. This is what a real man. A real man gets to know the woman first. So a real man steps to this woman. She has this wall up, and I often tell a lot of my female friends. Watch a man's words and his actions. Give him the chance to screw up. But at least let him, just give him a chance. But so many sisters have this wall built up that you know, well, I don't believe, I don't believe you. But hold on, hold on, you don't know me yet. Get to know me. If I, if I say I want to get to know you, just because what this other man did, don't put me in that same boat. All that baggage. Right. Don't put me in that same boat. That's what many of us real men are trying to tell the sisters, hey, Find out about me first. Then, then you can make your decision. If I screw up, then yeah, okay. So basically what, what you're saying is that we're carrying the baggage from past relationships yes. and wanting you to really prove that you're not pooky that hurt them last month. Wait a minute, I'm trying to figure out why y'all picking on all the hood people. <laughs> okay, why, okay. Why, why, why you wasn't with It could have been uh, Jeffrey or Jarvis Anthony or hurts David people. Or Everybody hurt people. Pookie, I got your bag. It's not like it's not always spooky, honey. Not, it could be very It wasn't than a third, you know. I do name all the girls in the hood, but it ain't always good. It, it ain't always good, people. It, you know, it's just regular folks. And we are, I think we are carrying baggage. But I think we're going to move on because we have been in this dating segment for a long time because it, it's a lot to be said about it. It's a lot of conversations that need to be had when it comes to different uh, generations, different age groups. And things like that. So, okay, and I think what we're gonna do. I know we we setting off alarms over here. We just can't help it. That's just we just powerful like that. You hot? Is that it? Don't worry about it. Uh, so we're gonna move on. So I think you guys talked about what we're gonna talk about next. What we were talking about. Um, when do we introduce our children? And when do you introduce somebody you're dating to your children? Do you? Or have, should you? Or should you even if you're just dating? That goes back to are you in a situation or are you in a relationship situation? Because if you're in okay, a situation, say, your children never need to meet any of those. Let's people. say we think we're in a relationship. Like for some people, they think they've been dating 30, 40 days and they think this is it. They should meet my kid. I'm in love. That's I'm in love. So what is the conversation? It goes back to using your words. What is the conversation you're having with the person that you're dating? Are you ready for us to move to the next level? Because if the next level is what we're discussing, then we do need to bring our or mine or your children in and let them become a part of this situation now. And see, that's where I think the dating timeline has to happen. Whether it's sex or not, that ha there has to be a timeline because who are you introducing your children to? Like, if you go to a mall and you see somebody hanging out, selling dope pants, hanging down, are you just going to go up and arbitrarily introduce your child to this person? Hey, this is my kid. No. no you're not no. going to do that. So if you're going out with somebody, though, my, my, my point is you still have to get to know them because you don't know what they're about before you introduce them to your kids. And I want to be, you know be careful with the descriptives because we have to make sure to stay broad because you have the people with the pants sagging. You have the men like one that just That's just an example the, of somebody right, you would not just, want your no, child to the, be influenced before the, by. Before the audience, when you are bringing someone, because if you like the guy that's sagging, that's cool, but if you spend enough time with him and the relationship is going to the point, then we can consider but that's, that But that's my point. That's exactly what I'm saying. Regardless of how they look or what it is they're doing, if they're not doing something or living in a way that you would want your son or daughter to emulate, why are you dating these people? Well, I'm going to tell you, I, I didn't believe in introducing my daughter to guys that I date. And my daughter's 21 and gone. But I didn't, I didn't believe in it. Because I wasn't trying to replace her, her dad. Because her father, which is what's on the birth certificate, the word father, he's also her dad, which is a term of endearment. I think this, this uh, generation has it twisted. So I didn't know. Uh, okay. Uh, I didn't believe in introducing guys that I met or guys that I was dating to my child. I just didn't. I wasn't trying to replace her dad because she has a dad, that she has a relationship, and we co-parent in the truest sense of the word. 
So if the guy that I was dating didn't like that I was speaking about my ex-husband in, in a good term and had a problem with him, then I have a problem with you because I'm not going to badmouth my daughter's father. That is her dad. So well, for us, in my home, I don't know about what's out there and what goes on now, but for me, it was good for me. She didn't need to meet him. Now, with somebody that I wanted to later marry, and we are talking the potential of marriage, then yeah, I need to introduce her. But just some dude I'm dating, and, and there has been, there's, we didn't use our words, and we just out going out on dates and having good, there were situationships. No, you don't need to be. Which, then I'm looking at you while you in the hurry to meet my daughter because there could be some pedophile I, stuff going what, on. I'll tell you what. But there, I, I, there just, is a I agree with you. Is, there's a such thing as too soon and too late. Right. I know of a classic situation. A client came to me. She never came back because I counseled the hell out of her before she got up out of there. You I had to leave it. I had to give it to her whether you come back and spend your money here or not. Did you her daughter. Scalp? Oh, I scratched her. But while I was scratching her scalp before the shampoo, okay. I was giving her the, the, the okay, information. Uh, but her issue was she had an only child, the girl was 14, you have decided that this relationship you're in is now going to the next level, i.e. he's moving in with us, but the way your daughter found out was the next morning when she woke up and he was there. Oh, no. The little girl was in counseling, they had to put her in the hospital, she literally lost it and came unwound. And the, the mother's whole outlook was, well, I'm not going to be lonely and be by myself, I, I'm ready to move on with my life, and I'm like, that's cool, and you can take her with you, but there's a way to do it. That's disrespectful even if we're roommates, my sister and I are roommates, if she's uh, getting serious about a man. I don't want to come in the kitchen to get my coffee and my PJs and it's a dude on the sofa. You didn't have the decency to even introduce them. You didn't have the decency to make sure that they had some kind of chemistry between them because when you're dating a man and he gets serious and you want to go to the next level, your children are a part of that relationship. They have to be. They have to date him too. They have to spend time with him too. He has to spend time with them. Mm -hmm. it, it can go bad. If you do it too soon, if you take too long, it can go really bad. Well, I'm, I, I'm just going to say, I, I don't even know what to say about this because if you do it too late or you do it too soon, at this point, it worked out in the situation that I was in and my son loved this person and um, thought the world of this person, mm -hmm. but then the relationship didn't work out. So now I set my son up for another disappointment. So at this point, as his mother, I can no longer do that to him again. But listen, here's the thing. We have to teach our children strength. This is where prayer and faith in God comes in because what your child needs to understand is things aren't going to necessarily go perfectly. You have to armor them, give them the armor they need so that if we do fall in love with this man, we accept him as a part of our family, he becomes someone that I'm in a, what I believe is a real relationship. If things should not work out, because things sometimes do not work out, you have to give your children, because what you'll do if you don't take them into relationships with you, you're going to teach them a different message and then he's going to be scared about relationships later. You can't go into a scare. Well, you, you have to prepare yourself that things could either go well that's or true. not. And if they don't, you have to be brave enough and strong enough to pick yourself up and you have to teach your children the same thing. We and gotta I, move on. And I understand where she's going because it's like another form of divorce. It is. When you when you introduce your child to to your mate and that don't work out, that's another form of divorce. Oh, because they lose too. Because they lose too. And so what you're doing is introducing divorce after divorce after because you're saying, okay Johnny, is that a good term? That ain't that ain't Afrocentric. Okay, Johnny. I'm on the line with this you know, well, Johnny. Okay, Johnny. We love Joe. Right. Right. Mommy loves Joe, and mommy wants you to love Joe too. Joe said, "Yeah, man, I want to love you too." The love. There's a lot of love going on. Okay. And then Big Joe going to bounce. That is. That's another form of divorce. Well, this is where the counseling comes in. This is where making sure you're going into the relationship for the right reason comes in. There's a whole lot that plays a part. But I want to hear from the audience about when do you bring your children into it? Because you know what I want to know. I want to know. I need you to come with that face you made. <laughs> I want to know what you're saying is. <laughs> well, when you when a man is introduced to a woman's children. What does that make you think of the relationship and vice versa? When a man introduces you to his children, do you think this means we're together? Do you think it, I mean, is there a signal sent when you're introducing people so. but you to your what? children? I, I think I so. I have a question even before someone comes to the microphone because if you're, in, if you're, if you're being introduced to my child, where are your children? And are you taking care of your children? Because you can't take care of me and mine if you ain't taking care of your own. Well, we're just talking about dating, though. We're not talking about paying bills. Well, we're just saying in dating, and in dating, it would be mutual. It would be right. mutual. If both people have children, there has to come. We're not just talking about the women's children. There has to come a point when both of the people in the relationship 
have to have discussed something about when we bring the children into the situation. Because, you know, as women, again, we take assumptions. So he introduced me to his daughter. He asked me to do her hair. Yeah. He yeah. told me to take her to the mall. He, he asked me to take her to the nail shop. We in a relationship. We in a relationship. We go together. So... <laughs> Not situation situation right. 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 So how do you ever What is the message from that That's you know how, how do you know And that's why I think you should wait Until the relationship becomes serious enough Because it does send a message This is a serious message But like I said And y'all you know We kind of got off I will turn you in For child support You need uh, Yeah I've turned my own brother in And we'll do it again I'm, 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 I'm a serial Turn a person Before in Before she rents We would like to hear from the audience About how How do you bring your children has anyone brought their children into relationships? I ain't gonna tell y'all in. We have a we have a lot of, we have a lot of married folks and a lot of young people, but it is. But I, I just think that we have to be careful even when we're introducing. You know, and, I, and I, I, I was very uh, protective of my child. Not that there was anything that hurt. She has a loving dad. But I, you know, even for my own uncles, hey baby, come come give your uncle a hug. Close your legs. She ain't coming in between your legs. She'll come on the side and hug you on the side. I'm just that kind of mother. So some dude I'm dating, I want to know. I want to know why were you so anxious to meet my daughter? Well, you know, because I, I got think, one. When am I gonna meet your I daughter? Think that's when a, am I gonna meet your hold on? Play? That's a fair concern, but yeah. but there are some people who are they, just family oriented people, and some men. You got to remember, our history makes a difference. Some men have been in situations where they've dated women, and maybe she was afraid to bring her children to the situation, period. Maybe he didn't feel like he had a fair chance in that household and in that family. So he may meet you and say, well, how long are you going to make me wait to meet your kids? Because he may be looking for a signal from you as well. Well, yeah, and probably so. Well, while we're talking about all of this dating, we have to get to the topic of internet dating. Now, we may not have enough time in this segment, but I have some questions and concerns. Because, how are you meeting these people you're dating and waiting to introduce your kids to and waiting to have sex with and having relationships? How are you meeting these people? Because it's a whole lot of unhappy single people who are lonely and they can't seem to run into each other. Well, I think that goes back to the... I think that goes back into the standards and the games and the way things are going. Because regardless of how you meet the person, male or female it could be internet it could be introduction through a friend or relative it doesn't matter the bottom line is where are the standards where's the communication what are the goals and are we talking to each other about where we're going with it i so. would like to talk about the friend zone well, we, we will, <laughs> after yeah, the we, break we're going to talk about just listen, that we're going to talk about that in just a minute but we have to give a shout out to the daiquiri shop and they want to come talk they want to come talk about the daiquiri Listen, we are having a good time. They have been, we've been here twice. They've made and they us have taken feel, great care. They have taken, I mean, that's that grilled shrimp salad with them pickles. The I'm pickles. So sorry, it's the pickles. They got some love in the pickles. Excited I don't about get, the pickles. Okay, okay. okay they coming yeah. up. They coming gonna, up. They gonna come but up I'm telling you, they, so. have, they have graciously allowed us to come in and to host this show here that we normally host at our studios in Bedford. And I'm telling you, they, they have taken great care of us. Have they taken great care of you guys? Did you guys get y'all chicken? Woo! Y'all purple passion. Okay, I'm sorry. I was about to shout out the whole menu. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and let them know about the decorative shopping care, please. Where am I? I'm Grand Prairie. I ain't. He Grand Prairie. He's Grand Prairie. Grand Prairie. Grand Prairie. Oh. He Grand Prairie. He ain't coming this set. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, well, she. The decorative game. Time, huh? We oh, are having a good well, time. Yeah, we like to have fun around here, you know what I'm saying? We originated from New Orleans, you know what I'm saying? Woo! All of us, so you know what I'm saying? We've been out here since Katrina and things of that nature. You know and made the best so, of it. Family all oriented around here. So, so you want to go ahead and tell us what other locations you guys have? Yeah, we have another location in Grand Prairie, uh, Beltline and Pioneer. Uh huh. Yeah. And we have this one that's right off Frankfurt and 35, yeah. y'all. So in Carrollton. So and thank you. I mean, they got some good food. They have y'all. really good food. I thought it was really just good drink. daiquiris, but I'm yeah, telling you, what y'all do to them pickles? We just gotta talk off. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta give me the family secrets. Excellent food. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, listen. We'll be right back after these messages. Thank you.
You've thought about it, dreamed about it, and prayed about it. Starting your own business. Well, you can do it, and you don't have to do it alone. No matter what your business, Genesis Preferred Solutions will help you succeed. Here's Cassandra Bradford. We're a Christian organization designed to help you succeed at what God has called you to do. Genesis Preferred Solutions will help you avoid the pitfalls, fears, and costly mistakes first-time businesses often make. They'll guide you through the proper forms and help surround you with wise counsel. We partner you with other people that can help you become successful. We want to do the paperwork for you so you don't have to. And Genesis Preferred Solutions offers free training and seminars designed to promote success through the Word of God. Put action to the plan that you have. You are the best at what you do. So let's get started. Call Genesis Preferred Solutions now and ask about a tailor-fitted package for you. 800-718-2425. That's 800-718-2425. Church leaders, call today to schedule an exciting free seminar for your church or group. 800-718-2425. Go online to genesispreferred.com and do your own business by the book. Hi, welcome back to Sisters Unedited. We are still here at the Necker Shop in Carrollton, Texas, and we thank you guys so much for allowing us to come to your home. Our audience has been great. This is our second visit to the Daiquiri shop, and I think there will be a third, because we still didn't get to the friend zone in dating. There's a lot of things we missed. So I want to invite you guys to watch every Tuesday, 7 p.m. You can watch us live, or you can catch us on YouTube, or you can catch us on Sisters Unedited page, and you want to go to KRWC TV and check us out. So from my sisters and all of the people here at the Daiquiri shop, we say thank you so much, and tune in next week. Thank you.